Hey there, math students. Today we're going to learn how to read federal tax tables like this one here. And we're going to learn some other cool stuff as well. I want to show you where this tax table came from. It's part of a larger document. And it looks like this right here. So in your finance class, you'll be looking at a table like this. And I just took this part of the table out right here. And if you notice, there's a whole bunch of headings here, and I only include the headings for someone who is single and for someone who's married filing jointly. There's two others that I'm not including, but the process for calculating taxes for any one of these four headings is the same. So let's go back to the actual problem here and we'll get started. Let's say our gross income for the year, that just means the total amount of money that you earned for the year was $54,200. So you're responsible for paying federal tax on this, and that's what we're focused on today, our federal taxes. There's other taxes you have to pay, like city tax, local tax, but we're not going to be concerned with that right now. And let's say you earned some interest, you had some money put away in a bank or a money market account, and you earned interest on that. Let's say that was $192. Now you're responsible for paying taxes on the total of these two amounts, so we'll add these up. And 54200 plus 192 is 54392. Now, if you notice, the next thing down here is called a standard deduction. This works in your favor. It decreases the amount of money that you're responsible for paying taxes on, and it's a good thing. And for single people, the standard deduction in 2019 was $12,200. So we're going to subtract this amount from the 54392. And again, we're assuming we're single in this problem. If you are married filing jointly, this standard deduction is doubled. For 2019, it was $24,400. And some people use something called an itemized deduction instead of the standard deduction, but I'm not going to get into that in this video. So now what we're going to do is subtract the $12,200 from the $54,392, and I'm going to get this number here. 42192. And this is the final number that I'm responsible for paying taxes on. So all I need to do at this point now is to see where this falls in the table. And for this situation, there's five rows. Let me label those. Which row do you think this falls in? the $42,192, or between which two numbers do you think it falls between? Go ahead and pause the video and identify the correct row. Well, hopefully you're thinking row four, right? Right here. Because $42,192 falls somewhere between $42,150 and $42,200. Once you've identified the row, it's easy to calculate the tax. You just go over here, and it's this, it's this number right here. That's the tax you're going to have to pay for um, or to the federal government if you're single. And if you're married filing jointly, it would be this number here. So this is the amount of tax that you owe to the federal government right here. And I'll write that here, 5137. And if you forget that, you can look at your headings here. It says right here, your tax is right here. And if you're single, it's these numbers. And if you're married filing jointly, it's these numbers here, right? So let's just say for this problem, we're married filing jointly. The amount of taxes we would owe would be right here instead. But we're just concerned about this number here. Actually, if you were married filing jointly, it'd probably be a little less than that because your standard deduction is doubled. But again, my main focus here is just being able to read that table. And hopefully you're clear that this is the amount we're looking at here. So in other words, you have to pay the federal government $5,137. However, that's a lot of money. You're not going to want to write a check 
at the end of the year for this amount. So what happens is you have a certain amount of money taken out of your paycheck each pay period. It's deducted from your paycheck. And let's assume in this problem, you had $500 deducted from each paycheck taken out for federal taxes and you're paid monthly. So 500 per month. So how much total taxes were taken out of all your paychecks for the year under this scenario? What do you think I would do? Hopefully you're thinking I'll multiply by 12, right? Because there's 12 months in a year. That means you got 12 paychecks for the year and $500 was taken out of each paycheck. So I'll just go 500 times 12 and that's going to give us $6,000. So in other words, for the year, $6,000 was taken out for federal taxes. And you can look on your paycheck. There's a place on there where it says how much is taken out for federal taxes. Now, you should notice that too much money, you paid too much money, right? Because you're only responsible for paying this amount, $5,137. But you had $6,000 taken out in total. So you're going to get a refund. And to figure out how much you're going to get back, you're going to take this number, the 5137. I'm sorry, not that number. You want to take this number here, the 6,000, the amount of money that was taken out first. So you'll take the 6,000 minus this number from the table, minus 5137. And you're going to get $863. So you will, at the end of the year, get a tax refund for this amount. You'll get a check in the mail. And that's how tax refunds work. Now I want to be clear here that this amount is not money that the federal government is giving you. That's what a lot of people think. It's just you, you paid too much in taxes over the year, so you're getting some money back. Let's look at another scenario where instead of getting a tax refund, you're, you have to owe a little more tax at the end of the year. So let's say in the scenario, $150 is taken out of your paycheck instead of $500. Let's say $150 is taken out and you're paid biweekly. So per month, one, let's see, how would I wear that? $150 biweekly. I don't know if that's the best way to word it, but what I'm saying is that each paycheck, $150 is taken out and you're paid bi-weekly. So how, how much total federal taxes would be taken out for the year? What would I do? Do you remember how many pay periods are in a total year if you're paid bi-weekly? Hopefully you're thinking 26, right? So if you're paid bi-weekly, you get 26 paychecks for the whole year and of $150, was taken out for each paycheck, you just take the 150 times 26, and that is $3,900. So in this scenario, $3,900 was taken out of all of your paychecks for the year, but you owe this amount. So as you can see in this situation, you didn't pay quite enough and at the end of the year, you're going to owe a little extra money. You'll have to write a check to the IRS. And the way you figure out the amount you owe is you take the 3900 right here minus this amount, 5137. And you're going to get a negative number because you owe money still to the federal government. You would owe this amount right here. So in the first scenario that we did, you're going to get a tax or you're going to get a check in the mail. In this situation, you're going to have to write a check. So to be clear on how much is being taken out of your paycheck each pay period, you should really check your pay stub. It's on there. It says federal taxes. And that's pretty much it. I want to just go over one more thing that's a little confusing if you can hang in there with me. And this shouldn't take too long. Let me just clear all this stuff out here. Getting closer. Here we go. Almost done. 
And let's say that we have a certain situation where we did all this stuff. So I've got, let's say I have some stuff here. Boom, 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 boom. I did all this work here. And after doing all that, I came up with taxable income or taxable earnings of 42,150. 42,150. In other words, my taxable earnings in this scenario, or what I'm responsible for paying taxes on, or it's also called the taxable income right here, is $42,150. Which row would I use in this situation? There's five rows. And you can see why this is going to be confusing because the 42,150 falls in two rows. It falls here and here. It falls in two rows. So which one do I use? Do I use row three or row four? Well, that's when you have to go up to the headings. And this is confusing, but we're actually going to use row four here. And I'll show you why. If you look at the headings, $42,150 is at least $42,150, but less than $42,200. That's why we use row four. If you remember from your algebra class, at least means greater than or equal to. So another way to look at this is $42,150 is greater than or equal to $42,150, but less than $42,200. So in this situation, we would use row four. And I know that's a little confusing. I just wanted to go over that with you. If, if you're confused for this particular tax table right here for this one, just remember you use the second row that you see. So we saw the 42,150 in row three and row four. So we just use the second row that we see for this particular table, and that might make it easier for you to remember. Now, in other videos I did, it was actually the other way. You use the first row that you see. So you have to look at these headings to get that correct. And that's pretty much it. I hope you found this video helpful. I hope you understand how to read a tax table, a federal tax table, and I hope you understand the concept of a tax refund. So thanks so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video.